Hey everybody, Tony Thurman, the California Superintendent of Schools, is becoming something of a rising star on CNN because he's on again today with John King talking about the latest updates regarding education in California amid the coronavirus. And uh, here's John King right now um, presenting Tony Thurman in his conversation. Hey, here's where states stand on when and how to reopen schools. States in red say they're leaving it up to each individual school district to determine their own start dates. States in yellow don't have a final plan just yet. Joining me now is Tony Thurman, the California State Superintendent of Public Instruction. Good to see you again, Mr. Thurman. If there's any state that proves we cannot have a one-size-fit-all approach to this, it would be your state, our most populous state. About 10,000 schools, 1,000 districts, 6.2 million students, more than 360,000 teachers. Uh, so you are a leader of a monumental task. Where are you today? Uh, you know, thanks for having us on. What we're doing is having um, guidance to provide to those 1,000 school districts, but working with them, as we know that most of our districts are making their own plans. You know, obviously no one knows exactly what the future holds, but we know that when school reopens in, you know, in late August and early September for most of our schools, that students will have to come back to temperature checks and wearing a mask and sanitizing our classrooms and, and maintaining social distance. So we're having those conversations to guide our thousand school districts about how to approach opening with social distancing conditions. So every piece of this is complicated. Let me pick up on one of the pieces you just mentioned. You have 6.2 million students, 360,000 teachers, uh, masks. School districts provide the masks. These are children. Masks are going to get lost. Masks are going to get soiled. Uh, what are you talking about? You're, you're now essentially, you're in the hospital business, right? You're in the PPE business as you try to reopen schools? Uh, un uh, unfortunately, that's our reality. And, and, and I, I believe that, as you said, um, schools will have to be prepared to have masks on hand. That, you know, students forget things. Uh, we all forget things. And so, um, you know, our department is working closely with the governor's office and our office of emergency services to find ways to make sure that there's lots of masks and personal protective equipment. Uh, this is going to be the challenge for, for everyone everywhere, every sector. Um, but this is uh, the order of the day. And we've got to make sure that we've got lots of uh, equipment and supplies. Uh, otherwise, we can't do this. Uh, the only way we can do this safely, and we ensure, we are going to ensure that we only do this if it can be done safely, is that we have access to all the personal protective equipment. And, and, and where are you? And again, it'll be different in every district, but particularly, we started talking about this in our last conversation, about the urban districts uh, that don't have large classrooms, that don't have enough teachers, uh, and so you have to deal with the social distancing question. Uh, are you sort of running simulations, running data to see what makes the most sense, one week on, one week off? You know, with the one week some students are in the classroom, the other ones are doing distance learning at home. Uh, how do you work out that mix when you have to then factor in if you're going to have some in, some at school, some not at school? Uh, if you split the day, you have a cleaning challenge, I assume. Uh, so I assume it's er is, is it better to have one or two weeks on, one or two weeks off, or do we not know the answer yet? Well, you're right. These are complicated factors, but we're having conversations, and school districts are being very creative. Some are thinking about splitting the school day into two sessions, a morning session and then an afternoon session. You know, right now we've got good weather, and so a lot of schools are thinking about even having some class time outside. That gives a little bit more flexibility for schools that are, that are hindered uh, by space. We're seeing this in our child care sector where they're using the outdoor space um, to broaden uh, the campus and, and what we can do around social distancing. And I gotta say, uh, a lot of schools are preparing to offer a kind of blended approach of in-class instruction and some um, distance learning. And, and the distance learning might actually help us to keep our class sizes smaller. We know that families are asking for distance learning, so we're anticipating that there'll be a balance of in-class instruction with students wearing masks and social distancing and physical distancing and distance learning uh, as, as the order of the day as we go forward in California. Most states and local governments have had a giant hole blown in their budgets because of the economic shutdown of the coronavirus. So whether it's uh, PPE supplies, whether it's increasing cleaning at schools, whether it's getting the technology for students that can't afford it, for those who would still have to do distance or remote learning, uh, where are you in addressing that challenge, which I have to assume uh, is just overwhelming? 
All of this has huge phys uh, uh, fiscal implications, and there's no question that we can do this. Uh, we cannot do this without the help of the federal government. And, and I want to, you know, appreciate those in Congress who've talked about providing an additional federal stimulus and relief package. It absolutely is needed in California and, and every state. You know, I speak regularly with state superintendents and state school chiefs all across this country, uh, almost to a state. We know we need additional support from the federal government to uh, support, you know, more personnel so we have smaller class sizes and so we can support more, um, you know, equipment and supplies to keep our schools safe. We have to have that revenue uh, from the federal government. As you noted, the coronavirus's impact on the economy has been devastating. And uh, this is the time more than ever that we need for Congress and the president to send another relief package uh, to support all of our states. Uh, Tony Thurman, we wish you and your colleagues across the country the best of luck as you sort through these difficult challenges. Appreciate your time. We'll and, you know, folks, what he's talking about is the real the real problem, the government has not reacted fast enough to get money where it's needed the most. And this is not a complicated thing to do. It's something that will save our economy, save our very lives. And yet the federal government has consistently over the past few months fallen down on this job. They've got to improve.